Let's go back to just a little bit of 20 seconds. I hate, I feel like I rushed it and I think I'm going to, and this, yeah, this may make y'all feel a little bit better, but I'm pretty darn sure that I'm not going to need four days to do these next couple of chapters, okay? Because I'm, I'm probably going to get ahead so we can slow down a little bit because I'm not, uh, like I said, it's just not that big a detail. So we were in 23 and we, we were, I was enjoying this class. This one, we got over to plants and we were talking about the evolution of those. I believe we got down to almost the end. We talked about how the raw fire right firm and I had the dominant four fire right, which I thought was pretty it's crazy, right? That everybody don't have the dominant diploid like that, right? So that so what you see hanging out of the tree is their for their haploid generation that makes sperm and egg. Look at that swimming sperm, gotta have water to have sex, right? Then we saw the uh the ferns with their life cycle being absolute cray cray, right? Look at this. So the firm that you the mama got home has these little sores on the leaf, right? They produce spores that land and have to land in water, and this separate living entity that ain't even attached to the main body of the plant grows the male and female genitalia. The archegonium makes an egg, and the anthrobidium makes the sperm, and the sperm has to swim to the female egg, usually to another fossilis, so you can have sexual reproduction between two ferns. Now, I told y'all in the nursery, they just throw them a kind of limb off. And we you know just cut, cut one of these limbs and restore it, okay? But Truly in nature for them to reproduce, they had to make this post out. Did y'all see one of them out there? Y'all don't have to We have slides of this. This is cool stuff. You'll see the, the profiles today. And I made a joke as y'all watched the video that I had an aunt that thought that was some kind of infection on it. So she took tweezers and pulled them all off. And then that's a cat spray her fine. Or give it a whatever you call it, this directed me, okay? Who was a good girl? And when they don't have more girl, right? But I mean, she did. She was she's clean free, you know, and was putting Lysol trying to kill that black. She thought it was, it was a their reproductive structure. So kind of sad. So this is the true what alteration of generation. Right? Well, they have two. Is everybody find how crazy that is? I know I was excited and excited, but to me, I think I told y'all when I saw this first time in college, I thought that was going to go. That there was a separate living entity that did the reproduction. Okay. Um, Oh, okay, thank you. Make sure you went upstairs. You went to the program. I did. Thank you, Rob. I'm looking. Sorry to disturb you. Anyway, so pretty wild in there. Okay, then we kind of, I spent too much time on that. Then we went to the pines, the, the coniferous, the, the, the angiosperm, the genosperm, which means naked seed because they don't have, there's no fruit here. Thousand species. And of course, my favorite trees, the sequoias and redwoods are in this group, right? The oldest, and then the, uh, the, the, the other one's the oldest. So the largest living thing above ground and the oldest is, is from this commanding firm. Okay. Now, here's the part that blew my mind. And I didn't know this. I want to go back and put it on there. There's two cones. When you see a pine tree, there is a vapor cone, the Christmas ornament, big cone, and that's the female cone that's been dropped. Okay. And then if you look up in the tree, you'll see one look like a burnt cigarette, kind of like, like a cigarette, it's got kind of ashes. That's the little male cone, and that's the pollen producer. So they have, so they're, their gametophytes are the male and female cones, which are attached to the whole body. I'm going to tree you that. The spar fight, right? So it'd be like hanging on the limb. Okay. And in the female cone, you have an oval that makes the egg. And then you have the pollen producing pollen sacs here. And we all seen the pollen blow up in the, in the year, right? So pollen also looks like Mickey Mouse pad upside down. So you'll look at pine pollen on the microscope. It looks like you're like, tell you what, Mickey Mouse hat, okay? And when it lands, the wind catches it and blows it over to the female cone. It actually grows a pollen tube and it looks like Dumbo. And it grows down and fertilizes the egg. So pollen, the, the pines, the angiosperms use wind, man. They don't have pollinators. They use wind to move it. And then notice the female cones are always pointed up, but never pointed down in the tree. Because that's to catch the pollen landing in it. Okay. And fertilize it. And then it takes about three years to go from pollen to a baby seeds being hatched out of that, out of that, out of that female genitalia, the big female comb, then the comb falls off and you use your experiment. So that's like, so I thought, now look, I'm, I'm trying to make this very, because remember my, my, give me, from my specialty with reproductive physiology with humans, okay, and animals and stuff. So their genitals will fall off, okay, after they use them, okay, that would be really interesting It's Sunday morning right, at church around Sunday morning. We know who was bad last night, right? Okay, Ron, come forward, we see that you're missing. It fell off last night. This is found somewhere. Okay, whatever. Anyway, bad thought. Anyway, but this is kind of cool. Dominant life cycle is the diploid, right? 
and pollen allowed them to not need water. No, 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 no sperm swimming in water. So they, 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 they evolved away from that. That's how they were able to dominate the land. Does that make sense? Go across the whole world with a little dirt of land. Okay. And then we go to the angiosperm, of course, medicines and textbooks and, and two by fours. I mean, pine is super important, right? The, 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 uh, the ginger sperms are our main wood source, okay? And then we got sick and ginkgos, and y'all seen some of these other little plants, right? And then we get over to the big boys here, the flowering plants, the angiosperm, 270,000 species, including almost everything, all the plants we eat. They're the dominant plant now, and they have two evolutions to separate them from the pine, okay? They have fruit and flowers. Okay, so flowers are used to draw in the landing strips or like, I, I think of this, has anybody ever been to Vegas? I mean, most, okay, cool. You know what I'm talking about, the night light. First time I went into Vegas, I was, we came from, uh, from uh, Death Valley and we came in and we're coming in on the, and I'm talking about desert people. And you pop a hill and it's like lights up like, 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 like crazy things or thing, right? It really is amazing at night. That is to attract you to come lose money. <laughs> Right, go to the show or whatever, or whatever. Okay, well, this, these flowers attract pollinators to come in and eat part of their body. They eat the seed of food, nectar, or warmth, or whatever. Okay, and that, so flowers are all about plant sex to have a third intermediary pollinator to carry the pollen to the female egg so that they can have sex and have babies. Okay, it's all about plant sex, which is kind of weird because what do we do with it on Halloween? Excuse, I get Halloween and Valentine's Day very confused. Because they're both trick or treat. Right? And they involve, you know, doing real. Hey, look, look, if an alien ever come down and saw us on Halloween, dressing up with, with knives stuck in our head, going around like a bunch of fools, I'd blast us, man. I just dropped the bone, right? And the other day that I find very offensive, okay, I, I get my wife's steak, I buy her pair of shoes. But why are we cutting genitals of plants and giving them to each other? Well, for 12 is beyond me. But you know, we think about that as an alien. We're cutting the reproductive structure of these beautiful plants and giving them to each other in multiples of six or three. It's weird. Okay? So I don't know. I, I, I studied that for years. I didn't have a theory. And then one day, his kid, kid came up to me at class and he blew my mind. Y'all get me good idea. He said, maybe we give a woman plant ovaries and someday she will marry me and then I will be able to have children with her someday. It's a, it's a point. And it's a thought of future marriage or maybe or whatever. Remember that for about 10 years? It's, about, it's a theory, right? That's what we do in science. So my father, and then I had somebody come up to me and said, Robin, that works real good. So explain Mother's Day. Where's my mind? We all give mother this gigantic ovary. You know, the, the orchid, you're like, she's the mother of 20 kids, you know. So I say we're paying homage to the ovaries we come from on that day, on Mother's Day. I don't know. I'm just trying to come up with a theory on all this. But anyway, the flower plants really interesting. And by the way, I'm going to do this. I know it's COVID, it's a mess. But my first year here, 30 years ago, one of my teachers that was big into plants and taught this class. She gave me a video that we have now on DVD. And I, and I showed it to almost every class I taught. I, I can't show it to AMP, okay? I can't do it in AMP, okay? But if it's major biology or not major biology, you're going to get the plant. Now, let me carefully tell you the name of it because I got in trouble one time. I said it wrong in class. And, had, and I walked out, and an hour later, I got a call from somebody wondering why 20 people were trying to have my class. And it's sexual encounters of the floral kind. And I told the class one time, sexual encounters of the word that rhymes with floral. Think about that. What sounds like floral? I got to go have my teeth cleaned. And that's our oral. The, 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 you know, I got to have an oral thing. Okay. People dive into my class. I had to go back and walk in there. I made a mistake. <laughs> floral. Okay. But it is wild. It's a crazy movie I've ever, ever seen. And it's got the 70s music in it. It's shot in the 70s. I got it on DVD and we'll show it one night for bonus on like the midterm. Like five points gonna watch it. I had a girl watch it one time and scream and run to another teacher's office fine because it scared her. But she was very sheltered and never seen anything of those like G movies ever, you know, never seen like PG 13 that scared her. But it's very weird, but, but it's all about pollinators, and it shows how one animal, one plant gives off the smell of death, of death rotten fish, animals rotten, and the blood lines come in and lay their eggs, thinking they're going to eat, and, then, and they, so they use the smell of death to draw in pollinators. It's not all about the flowers, okay? There's others that do weird things. It's all, but the, the, the flower gives the plant, the animal, the insect, or animal, what it needs, right? And so it tricks it into coming in and getting the pollen so they transplant it somewhere else. 
And they actually got that plant to actually a museum in Chicago to germinate, to actually do it. So it makes the smell of dead flesh and blow flies come in and get caught and they get pollen put on them. So they go and get caught again. That's the only way, that's the only way on earth they can pollinate. So pretty fascinating. So we'll look at some of that. So we're all coming down to this flower, okay? And I want you to draw one. So here's a good picture of a, now sometimes you just get the male flower, sometimes you get a female flower, and this one, most of them have both. So here you have both genitalia. You have the female oval, carpal, with ovary, style, and stigma. Notice it's a landing pad for a butterfly, right? It looks like a dead gum helicopter cut pad out there by the, the Baptist East, right? You know, or, or, or the male. Okay. And then the male anthers come up and they produce pollen. So a lot of times they will have an area for the for the for the bees or whatever to come near them. And bees are big pollinators in our crop. If the bees die, we'll miss a crop. We got enough. Benny, we need to eat for about five years. Thank you, really bad. We missed two or three crops. Okay, thank you, really bad. Right? You know, I'm talking, you know, I'm, I'm getting into my sci fi movies, you know, you know, what is it, uh, Thunderdome or whatever, Mad Max, you know, we're just, we're just two or three missed crops from Mad Max, okay? Okay, for real. But anyway, these guys, so bees are really, but we don't need the bees to die. Okay, so they get the pollen on, they land here, and when it lands, it grows a pollen tube down to fertilize the egg, okay? And so here is the flower here showing the whole thing. So check this out. Pollen grown in the pollen microsporangium produces lands on the on the female part, and then it grows a pollen tube down, and, and each pollen fertilizes one egg. And then the fruit of the corn is the, they're all in a row, the eggs are in a row. Have you ever pulled corn and noticed they were, they were like teeth missing? Like it had holes in it, wasn't enough pollen in there, wasn't enough pollinators in the area, or enough wind blow to get the, get them, get them a, to get the pollen there. And the silks and corn, there is a silk for every pollen. The pollen tube is a silk. So if you're really OCD, you can count the, the, the silk, they equal the number of corn kernels. Because each one of them fertilizes an egg. And that corn on that seed, the corn kernel is a seed in an embryo, you know, baby embryo in there with food around it and a protective coat. That's what seeds are. If I'd known that, I thought it was a botanist, right? I mean, to think about that. So if you see the silk sticking out of an ear of corn, that's what the flower was, and it fell off. And then they pulled, then you pull the corn off. Which is the baby all in a row. So this becomes the fruit. Now apple, same way. Apple see an apple swells up, and that's a, a fruit or ripening, 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 rotting ovary to put fruit on. And they're usually good to, for to eat, to have some flavor to it, something so for somebody to take them and, and eat them. Pretty cool. So flower diversion, we're born, some of them we're born, born pollinators, others use birds, insects, bees are big ones in our food crop. Uh, not blooming flowers. I mean, this is, that video is just all that video of sex was kind of for kind of shows you 30 or 40 really unique. Uh, there's one, there's an orchid in South America that has a, it actually, it, it has a vase of, of, of nectar that comes in and the insect falls in it. And if it crawls out, it has a footstool in it for it to crawl out, then it, it glues pollen on its back. And the only way that plant can germinate is for that bee to fall in another pool. And it, and it pulls it off when it crawls out and it has a little step ladder in it for that bee, for that bee to crawl out. So that bee and that orchid have evolved together. If you don't believe in evolution, go watch that movie and you'll we have proof of evolution, okay? Because that could never ha happen randomly, okay? Anyway, the fruit flowers, very cool, right? They use wind, gravity, water, other animals, cooker birds. How many of y'all been out hunting or in the field that got cooker birds in your sock? That's seed. So those folks and all are to grab the animal or grab your sock, so you'll throw it in the desert. I mean, I got a I got a, 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 a batch of a couple birds in my backyard where me and my dad would go hunt and throw all those couple birds, kick them out in the backyard. Well, a couple birds in the backyard. Pretty crazy. Anyway, different types of flowers. We're going to move on. Let's go to the next chapter. Sorry about that. But I did find this very interesting. All right, stop sharing. Let's go to the other ones. Share screen. Okay, here we go. So this is a little bit easier chapter. I think, oh, and I pulled up the wrong file. Thank you. I'm going to pull up PDF. We, let's just go with it. Uh messed up. Hang on, let me just hold on. Don't you love it when you do that? Get old in my eyes. Gotcha, hang on. Come on, man. Be like that. I'm looking at the damn folder. 25, right? Twenty-four. I get these two chapters. Twenty-four. 
There we go. Okay, so flower and parts. This, we got this one first, and the next chapter is pretty short, but it's really interesting. So this is looking at parts of flower. Now, once again, I am an animal biologist by, by nature, right? Human physiology, physical physiology. But this is really cool. Okay, right off the bat. What are they made out of? Well, plants are made out of three tissues. Now, we're made out of four. So we cover animals. Animals have a couple of them, muscle, nerve, and connective tissue. Uh oh, she's remembering the AMP. She had me for AMP all last year. Okay. So, anyway, so connective epithelium, muscle, and nerve. Well, plants have three. They have, they have one common with us epidermal, outer covering, epidermal tissue, outside covering. And then they have one that y'all already heard me talk about vascular tissue, which are going to do what? Carry water up the plant, I'm tree, water up the plant, dial them, and blow them to carry the product, the first business from the leaf down the plant. And then they have a third group, it's kind of weird, and this is the generic plant cell called ground tissue. So ground tissue are just your average generic plant cell, okay, that we would find in roots, stems, and shoots, okay? And they have three names, and I couldn't make it up if I had been high on something to come up with a name, syrenchyma, syrenchyma, and syrenchyma, or whatever, I'll put it in there. They're crazy, and that's their name, which is bizarre, okay? But they're your generic cells. Now, the first question I think I had was, what's meristem? Meristem are cells that still have the ability to reproduce and become any of these three. Okay? So, so this would be the equivalent to us a stem cell, right? In our development in mother's womb, you know, the stem cell research where they can grow them and they start to have one that becomes nerve tissue and one that becomes connective tissue and muscle and nerve. Okay. So these are their meristematic means they can still divide and become uh, any type of tissue. And you can see here that we have a Proteoderm that gives rise to epidermis. We have one that gives rise to the regular ground tissues, and we have one that forms the vascular tissue. Okay, so a tissue is a group of cells specialized to do a particular job. An organ is a bunch of tissues working together. So we, you know, in animals, so we have organ systems. Our A and B book is broken down into different organ systems, right? And organs are made out of tissues, right? And tissues are a group of cells working together. So just some some terminology here. And please, if you have a question on that, some of this, raise your hand. So meristem cells will then divide into these different cell types, okay? So meristems still have the ability to divide, okay? Apical meristem is found in the tips of the stems and roots, and this is where we grow. Y'all might find this very interesting. Their plants, uh, they don't just, they, uh, they don't, they don't, they don't just, uh, I always tell this story. If you're, if you're ever, in, I just started writing on farms. The fence is a huge tree, and you, you nail the fence to the tree, and the tree, Grows an inch every six months. In 20 years, how high will the wire be? Is it going to pick the wire up? No, they just add it to tilt and shoot. So they don't, they don't like jack up the new floor. They don't put a new floor, you know, like a second one, they jack it up. They just add a new floor on top to do it, like that's doing a skyscraper. Just put a new floor on top. So the plants only grow up and down at the roots and tilts and shoots and stems. Okay? So what happens if you ever done this before? You come back and the wire will be in the tree. Because it grows hours. She doesn't know it'll, it'll grow in the grow round, right? So you may get erosion, it looks like it picked it up, which happens sometimes, but it will not pick up the, the wire per se. Okay, so here are our three tissues again epidermal, ground, and vascular. Okay, and we're going to talk about each of those. Okay, so epidermal forms the outside protective covering of the plant. And it has it's obviously the epidermis is the same thing as our epithelium. It has a couple of cool things to make it really unique. It has a waxy coating called a cuticle. And that goes evergreen trees out there, scrubs, y'all all pull the scrub, right? It's got that wax on it. Just like you put wax on your car paint, it's what? Protected by it. Wax is, is to, so the plants will not. I mean, yeah, imagine if they went a cuticle to the rain, it would be like green Kool Aid over there for a month, not down the stream and stuff, right? It would make, it would bleed, it would bleed out some of that chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, right? And it'd just be like green Kool Aid over there. So that waxy covering is protection, it keeps them from drying out. Okay, root hairs increase the surface area so they can absorb more water. That's another outgrowth of these. Uh, here's the one that I'm not super familiar with. These trichromes are little structures over the stomata that, that kind of protect the stomata from direct sunlight and also just uh, this little protective structure. And some of them are tentacles for plants to hold on to things too. So it protects from sun and moisture loss and uh, discourages other uh, herbivores from eating them. So sometimes they actually make poisons to kill insects to not eat them. Okay, and of course the stomata is what? The opening on the bottom of the leaf that opens up to do the gas exchange. I hate, I hate using the word the mouth of the plant because they don't take food in, right? They make food, but they open the stomata to let oxygen out that they make and bring in carbon dioxide that they use to build sugar. So this is where they do the gas exchange. And this is where they evaporate water. This is going to be very important in the next chapter 
because that's how they pump water up. They evaporate water at the stomata, and that pulls water all the way from the root, all the way to a 300 foot tall redwood tree in California. Fascinating. They don't have a heart pump. They use the power of water evaporating at the stomata. We'll come back to that. Older woody plants have this paradermal on the outside, and cork cambrion makes the bark, of course, the bark. So there's a special reproductive tissue, cork cambrion, that makes the cork, that makes the bark. The bark will fall off every year. So you have to build up a bark. Some of y'all may buy that and go for a record, right? The bark and stuff is usually shed each year, most of the woody plants. All right, here's our three. Y'all thought I made it up. So the three ground tissues are parenchyma, palenchyma, and scarenchyma. I always think these are like the, the seven dwarfs. You know, they have any sneezy and droopy or sad or whatever, okay? So anyway, so sparenchyma is your generic plant cell. These specialized, most abundant cell found in all organs of plants can divide to give rise to more specialized cells, contains chloroplasts, and for more photosynthesis. So this is your typical plant cell. Calenchyma has a thicker primary wall and form bundles underneath the epidermis. And it provides a flexible support like a skeleton for plants. This is the strings, the thick strings and celery stalks. When you pop celery, that stuff is the stringy stuff in there. And this is a structural cell that helps form a skeleton of sort for plants. So, Kalenchyma is a good example of the celery stalk, the lines in that. And then, Scarenchyma has a super thick secondary wall of leg leggings and very, very tough, non living maturity. So, it ends up dying, so it's a, but it's part of the plant. Uh, primary function support mature regions of the plant. Uh, a couple examples of sclerenchyma are fibers, long slender, grouped in bundles found in ropes. So, and I know, I know, once again, we don't have a farm base in any county anymore in Mississippi. When I grew up, I was raised on a dairy farm, but a lot of people, like your summer job, guys, and girls, maybe wasn't on a farm. Anybody ever bell, hey, well, anybody ever care, hey? Oh man, that's tough for a minute, right? The little square, the moon square one. I think they were from the devil himself. The devil, the devil, he made, I'm telling you, the first round batter I ever saw, I just tried to hit these to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, that's great. Okay, but those, remember those square bells that had the, the, the thread? That, that's what we're talking about. The twine that would do that was made out of perfect. And I hate to say it, I don't want to get into uh, marijuana. So we got all kind of craziness now that we voted marijuana in Mississippi for medical reasons. Right? Okay. Uh, I've never smoked marijuana. I've never smoked marijuana. So the, the minute I did, it'd be the cops were rolling in. Okay? I've never done anything illegal. But him, marijuana was brought to America for the rope in, not to smoke it. Okay. But then the leaves turned out to be very, very commercially, very, very valuable, right? And by the way, I hate to say this, guys, but I'm not, I'm not at all. But my thing is, I, I, it's my personal thing is, I think you got a right to do what you want to do. Just don't do it on my on my yard. Don't do it, don't know you if you know, don't, you know, you know, you know, seek help if you got a problem, you know, but if you want to go out here. Shoot a gun, I got 100, I got 30, 40 guns myself. You know, just don't shoot from my house. You know, don't shoot my house. Okay. But anyway, but marijuana is much, much safer than some of the drugs some of y'all are taking. 10 times sharper than these pain pills and this opioid addiction that we're seeing, right? So it's kind of funny because the people that make money off marijuana would not be the people that own the drug companies or own the tobacco industry. So they've been against it. So it's kind of like who came here first. So our country is based on based on what? Tobacco. All right. Back in the day. It grows, by the way, Mississippi would be Mississippi, Louisiana would be the kingpins because it grows better here than anywhere in the United States. Mississippi, Louisiana is perfect weather for it. I've been told. That's a fact. Okay, but anyway, kind of weird. Okay, and then look, that other one here, y'all seen this one, the coconut shell? The shell on coconut and nut shells, peanut shells. That's another good example of, of scorinchum. Scorinchum? Yes. <laughs> one more time. Yeah, I thought you were going to do the bad dream. Kalinkum? And parenchyma. Okay. You know I got a short answer question about that, right? That's crazy. Here are the cells of parenchyma, calenchyma, and scorenchyma. And you can see it kind of got more of that thick fiber. I think of that peanut shell, coconut shell, you know, <laughs> rope, and typical plant cell. All right. Catch my breath. Is that not crazy thing or thing? I feel like y'all, y'all, when I took a lot of class and take rest, you're all like, we just didn't get that nice cricket. Did not get that south of the line cricket. Okay. All right, we'll look at those in the lab. See, here's some modifications of some of the epidermal, the root hairs. There's a little, these little hairs, these are the trichomes that are protecting the stomatas. Okay, a paradigm gives rise to lateral stems and roots, and there's that guard cell surrounding the stomata. So, the guard cell, we'll see that in the next chapter. One of my short questions is how does it open and close? So, it's like a water, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a tire. And when you feel the air tire up, it opens up the circle, right? You let the air out. 
it closes, but it's water, fill it up with water or no water. So it's just some water going, filling up a air tire with water. Okay, that's your door sill. All right, moving on. Now let's talk about our, the next one is our vascular tissue. Okay, now remember we said one in review, we had epidermal, so three brown cells, brown tissues, and then vascular. Now, by the way, this is way easier than that like prep cycle, right? Okay, so at least we're not doing prep cycle. Okay. okay, xylem carries water up the plant from the roots all the way up to the leaf where the water is evaporated. So every cell that needs water has xylem coming by, right? So they can pull water out to do whatever they need that cell to do. So this is the over movement of water in the xylem tube. Now, xylem, but these are made out of, and here are the, here's the two cells it's tracheid and vessel element. And they're very thin and they may form a continuous straw tube from the leaf all the way to the root. Now, I hate to use this language, but I'm going to be honest with y'all. How many of y'all have ever had to borrow gasoline from another vehicle for the water hose? Anybody done that? Okay, now I didn't say still, I said bar. Okay. And I had to run out of track before I had to go get the gas. When you suck that fuel, if you suck it, you have to drink a little bit, but once you get it going, the, the hydrogen bonds just keep the water flowing. Same thing here. Once we get that evaporation with that leaf, the water keeps going up unless you get an air bubble in there and it stops. Okay, so we use some of that uh, hydrogen bonding to do that too, to pull the water up. Uh, I was reading ahead, I actually read this for the next two chapters, and I was really disappointed because a lot of books will put a table of this is called transpiration, the evaporation of water at the leaf to pull the water up. But a corn plant will do you know several liters a day. So that they better get out of the car in summer or July and pick some, pick some corn, and it's kind of hot on the road. But when you get down in the cotton field, the corn field, you think you're walking into hell. That's the that's the evaporated water raising humidity from 10% of the car to 100% of the field because they throw water out the leaves, and that makes it very humid. To work in a, if you ever hold it, I'm getting that's I get somebody go, oh, that's a corn bill. No, 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 hoeing the corn. The whole wing to the top. I gotta use my terminology better to kill the weeds. Okay, anyway, all right. Zyl carries water up, trach it, best element for the two parts that make it. Flow on is the tube that carry the the, the product of photosynthesis down the plant and sieve tube, uh sieve tube cells is the main one there. So here's a picture of one of them, and you can see these companion cells and sieve tubes carry the product of photosynthesis down. And we'll see, I want to show you the mechanism in the next chapter. But really fascinating. So the leaves are doing photosynthesis and the water is coming up, right? The xylem. So they actively transport the sugar into the flow tube and then water comes in by osmosis that flows it all the way down the plant. Feels very similar to my lady here in the back. I took the water hose and just thrown it to me to you. And I took some sugar and poured it in the tube and then hooked it up to the water hose and turned on the water and blew your sugar water. Now, how many of y'all know what I'm talking about when I talk about flow juice? I guess one of y'all don't remember maple syrup. Maple syrup is flowing out of a maple tree that we pour on pancakes and waffles. Now, how many of y'all pulled under a pine tree in the summer and got out of those resin that dropped on your car that you had to get a chisel to get it off? That's flowing out of a pine tree. Do not put that on your pancakes and syrup. It will kill you. Okay, it will be like, we go, it's the funeral home. Okay, so some of these are pretty cool, some are not. Okay, and flow them in a, in a, in a root, it's, it's, it's a sugar cane, sugar, brown sugar that we, we harvest. So, but some of that's edible, some of it's not. But flow them carries the products of photosynthesis down the plant, and everybody gets what they need, and it ends up in the roots where sometimes it's stored, like in a baked potato, it's stored in a potato, tube, whatever. So that's stored food. Fascinating. Now, what really blows my mind here is y'all really on this guy, they got tubes. I hate to. Y'all forgive me because I know the pure botanists will get mad at me, but I gotta relate this to us, right? We got arteries and veins that carry blood from our heart to every capillary vein, every cell of your body, right? And then veins to carry it back. And then we take it to the kidneys and you know whatever to filter and stuff. So plants have a very not the same, but they have a circulatory system of water coming up the plant, and some of that water being carried right down the floor and carrying the sugar down the plant. So they have a Circulatory system to speak of. I mean, they, they, these are been calculated. I mean, I, 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 should, I, should, I wish the book had done this, but I, one of the old books they used had a table of how much water it throws up in a day, it releases a day. Now, which one do you think that throws up more? A um, tropical rainforest plant or, 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 or cacti in the Arizona desert? So, that cacti is like 0.1 milliliter a day. You know, corn in the summer of Mississippi 
You have 20 liters of that, throw it out. So thousands of gallons are being thrown in a, in, a, in, a, in a big field. Pretty fast that. That's why you can see it kind of, see the, see the moisture coming up. Okay, flowering plants, let's talk a little bit more. So vegetative organs here, talk about roots and stems. So, so basically everything above the ground is a shoot, everything below the ground is roots, okay? And we'll look at some structures of these. Now look at this picture, this is kind of cool. Can everybody see the red line? That's your vascular column and bundle. So in other words, down and flow goes from the root all the way up to the leaf, and that's what serves in those red trees. So where you cut it, we're going to look at some pictures of roots and see xylem form in it. We're going to cut some stems and we're going to look at some leaves. The uh, end bud is called the terminal bud. Somebody said that was the last drink in the cooler one time in class. The last year is the terminal bud. I'm going to get on the way home. Okay. All right. And the leaves have the petiola where they're attached to the stem, and then you have the blade uh, with a vein, vein in it, and then you have the leaf part, the petiolas are the, the pet, petals are the sides of the leaf. Those little lines you see in there are xylem shoots going up in the plant. So you got xylem form in those root, root in the leaf vein, all the way down the stem, all the way down to the roots. There it is more in the vascular tissues in the red. Very cool little picture there. Shoots, roots. Okay, let's talk about stems. Okay, we already said nodes occur where leaves are attached to the stem, inner node, and somebody was bored, they named the space between them. The inner node, the space between two nodes. Where a leaf comes off, okay? Kind of weird. Uh, leaves have the blade, the petiola, which is the stalk where it sticks to the stem, right? And then the blades on each side of it, okay? And some of these can be tendrils to grab a hold of things. Others are bulbs that can store food. Uh, have you ever done, uh, anybody go watermelon? Well, not watermelon, uh, tomatoes. They grow better in a cage, right? They like to grow up, you get more fruit, they lay them on the ground, right? So my dad had like, and I, I think I said that he kept dementia, but this kept him going last spring as he planted 40 tomato plants in the backyard, 40 different barrels, the five gallon barrels. I mean, he had tomatoes, they planted one like every other day, so he got tomatoes coming in every day. Ate them, you know, they, and he took good care of them. Something to do. All right, pretty cool. Leaves are modified, bulbs are modified leaves, okay? And that brings us to one of our terms here that we got. I'm actually going to show it to you in just a minute here. I got a, actually got a, let me go put some on this picture here. This is done. But the flowering plants, angiosperm, and by the way, this chapter is mainly talking about angiosperm, right? That's the one we'll use the demo here. But the flowering plants can be broken into two groups, the monocots and the dicot. Okay. Now I don't know why they want to put you you dicot on it. Okay. I think it may be so I'm just gonna go with those two, monocots and dicot. Okay. Whatever they want to call it now, you dicot or solid E, I don't care. Okay. But here's the deal: when you cut a seed, there's a little leaf in here. It's gonna be the first leaf that comes out of the ground. And dicots have two little leaves, monocots have one. So they have one. This is called a cotyledon. So that's the primitive seed leaf in the seed. You can cut butter beans, you can cut corn, and you can tell me the one and knock out looking in that seed. Okay? For those, for those little cotyledons. But a better way to look at these other patterns, look at this. The root of a monocot, which are usually grasses and, the, and shrubs and stuff. And the, you can, the dicots are big trees, okay, they're usually bigger trees. But the xylem rings form a circle in the root. I'm going to show you a picture of that in just a minute. So that they have the xylem and floral in units forming a ring. Okay, the, the dicots have a star in the middle with the red being the xylem, the, the, uh, I think it's Mr. Royce right here. The xylem is inside the floor. So red is xylem and blue is floral. Okay, which is really weird because when you cut the stem, look what it does. You get a ring in the dicot stem that we didn't get. You had the ring down here in the monocot roots. But here we get a ring with red as island, blue as floral. And in the monocot, you get a random assortment of the vascular bundle with the red, and blue, and silent floral. It's random. To me, this one right here even looks like uh, this one looks like the, the face of short you just spent looks like the monkey, the organ grinder monkey, <laughs> you know, with the two eyes and the big mouth open. Oh, okay, I see a little monkey looking back at me when I see that one. That's one of the way I learned it. Uh, monocots have parallel leaves. So what does that look like? It looks like corn, right? And grass in the front yard. The oak tree is a dicot and it has the leaf vein in it. Now here's where it gets really weird. The monocots have flower parts. That would be the male and female, genitalia, and multiples of three. You have three, six, nine handles. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's really weird. Okay, they say everything's in three, whereas the dicots are in multiples of four or five. You can see the five petioles there on that. That orchid or whatever it is, that flower, see the five of those. Okay. 
Um, I know you're lost with mine. Pretty cool. So we can actually, there's a, a shared picture there. And then if we get down and look at pollen, the monocots have one pore, little open or slit, and these guys have three pores or slits in the dicot. So I got a short answer question on there. I think I asked for like three or four examples, three or four things to separate monocots and dicots, right? Really easy question on the test. This is group memorization here. So that's kind of cool. So let's take a look at some of this. Okay, here we go. And it talks about the decent gene that we can turn. Oh, for instance, the annuals are those that you plant every year and then they uh, come back every day. Let me get my story straight. Annuals live for one year. So you plant corn and you can buy corn that's 120 day corn. You plant it and you harvest 120 days. You buy 100 day corn. So you plant every year. Apple trees, apples are perennials. They come back every year. They flower every year. So perennials keep flowering if you only plant them once. Like you plant grapes or something in your yard and your backyard somewhere. So perennials can be uh, annuals can be converted into perennials by knocking out these two genes here. So we we plan with that. So the difference between annuals and perennials is this leaf Y and this epithelial and one gene, and we can turn them on, we can genetically alter them to block flowering, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, a lot of these also are based on the temperature they'll flower whenever you have so many days of warm temperature. And other uh, cocoa birds, listen to this, they flower when you have. Uh, the night the spring in the, in the winter, the nights get longer, the spring and the days get longer. So they're waiting on a few short nights before they flower. And I've done this before in labs where you can take a flashlight and shine on a cooking bird and delay them flowering for two or three weeks. And the day you don't shine a light on it, you'll flower the next day. So they're really dependent on flower temperature or amount of sunlight. And that's why they don't grow real good in the backyard we get a lot of light. Is that those are not patterned off and they don't get those continuous nights that they're looking for. Pretty well. Okay, uh, root count contains the root apical meristem, the zone of elongation, blah, blah, blah. Epidermis is the outer layer. There's a cortex. There's a layer of endoderm. It's very important. It's a short answer question that forms a inner vascular cylinder that protects the xylem and phloem. And this forms what's called a Casparian strip. Okay, what this means is, and I'll show you in just a second, is water and minerals can't get into the xylem without being actively transported through the cytoplasm of this Casparian strip. This helps the plant keep from being overwatered or over fertilized. So it's a protective layer that prevents you from overwatering your plant. And you still can overwater plant and kill it, or you can over fertilize it, okay? But it is, but it requires water and anything in water like minerals and vitamins to be actively transported into the cell and carried through the cell. So it is a way of controlling how much water goes into the vascular cylinder. Okay, pericycle also give rise to lateral roots and lateral branches. Okay, and of course, you got vascular tissues out of the form. Let's look at a picture better. So, here is a root of the monocot, right? Or dicot? I get it back because I don't teach that lab anymore. Oops. Star, that was dicot. So, here's a dicot root. Okay, and you've got the uh, epidermal layer. Then you have ground tissue cortex, is, is a parenchyma cells. And look, that endodermis forms a layer, Casparian strip. So the water and minerals have to go through the cytoplasm and then it goes into the phloem and then xylem. Okay, so very important when we get to the chapter on physiology, this, this layer controls the amount of how much water and minerals come into the plant. This is, I may have to go tell my, I have a, thank God, I may say that, I'll say that to the chapter on physiology, but don't really not tell you all my story about my dad destroying the Caspian strip on his tomatoes one year. Okay, it's a very good story. I think you can drive that home, okay? But that's what that does. Here is the lateral root coming out of the pericycle, give rise to lateral roots. Okay, here's the monocot root, and you get the uh, ring structure of xylem and phloem is green. Here's the Casparian strip of the endoderm, which forms the Casparian strip. So water can go between all these cells, but it has to go through that endoderm, and that allows it to plant to control how much water comes in. Primary uh, tap root has one long root, like a, like a carrot. And fibrous fruits, everybody laid in turf. Like you go buy some turf and put it in your yard, it has a mesh, like a, a million little leaves. So a fibrous fruit is like turf, but a pine, another pine tree has a long tap root too. So fibrous fruit, anchor the plant really good, found a lot of monocots, a lot of dicots have their primary tap roots. I mentioned the two types. Adventitious roots are root developments from the root that can do many things, like can hold the plant up, can help them hang in the tree. This can form sugar. This is support. You ever see these roots? The water didn't wash that off. That's roots for anchoring. I always wondered if it rained that much, washed that much off, right? 
And these little things right here are the way the swamp uh, trees get oxygen. So their roots come up out of water and that's for them to get oxygen. Okay. So that's, that's part of their structure. Here's one with the things to hang in the tree. The roots can be specialized. Mycorrhizas, remember, uh, fungal and roots to aid in water mineral, mineral extraction. And then we have root nodules in the beans that do nitrogen fixating. And this is the only way we can get nitrogen out of there. Our atmosphere is what, 80% nitrogen, but we can't use it. Plants can't take it in and the, in the survive. So it has to be converted into nitrates. It's a solid that can be absorbed in the roots. And these nitrogen fixating bacteria do that. If I were a terrorist, that's what I'd go after. You want to ruin the world? Go knock out the nitrogen fixating bacteria. And watch this go back to stone ages. Okay, real quick. Okay, that would be bad. Don't do that. Okay. So, but they have to have nitrogen. So we already mentioned terminal root, the terminal bud. Uh, root apical meristems, okay, same thing here, nothing much there. Here is the cut through, you can see it here, see the vascular cylinder up at the door of the stem. Okay, pretty cool. And old xylem is wood, we'll see in a minute. I'm going to get to so herbaceous stems, right, non woody. Here they are, bone, xylem, monocot. Now, there's earth my organ donor. See the eye, the, the, the monkey eyes, the mouth, all I need is little. Organ, you know, and a bucket for some money. Look, it even looks like a head, doesn't it? See the head? But that's xylem and phloem back here. Phloem. Xylem, where's the phloem? Right back there. I thought I had it right. Okay, and then woody plants have primary growth, increased length. Secondary growth is rather instead of dirt. So plants add on more dirt, right? Why? Going wide, and we know about the tree rings, and we got a question about that. So we have bark, and we have wood, and then the pit. Okay, and so what we're going to see here is there's a vascular cambrian right here that's going to divide every year and push out. And then the bark falls off a lot of times and it keeps going. So we get a growth out and the tree gets wider. And every year, can you see the big cells and little cells? When the spring kicks in, the cells are big fat. That's called spring wood. And you get a big cell, but you get a great big cell. Then as winter comes in, or, or excuse me, that's spring cells. And then as we get to summer, late summer, the cells get smaller, then stop growing right here. And then the next year, the parasite, the uh, vascular camera divides again, and we get big cells again. See, and that alteration between big and small cells in the tree ring. You know that. And so we can actually go back and look at the growth of the tree ring and tell what kind of year it was 200, 300 years ago. Uh, when I went up several years ago, I took the kids when they were still little, and we went to Washington, D.C., and I went to Jamestown, because that's our earliest, you know, American. You know, uh, it's not until about that time, but that's our oldest first little town we have of Europeans by in America. And there were trees there that they have had fallen over and they checked them. And those poor guys, when they came in like 1640s or whatever, right? They had picked the worst dry spell in like a thousand years. So they came in a really bad time to come to America. And I remember the Indians that were later on screwed over, you know, they probably wouldn't have made it. Okay. But anyway, good point to stop here. We did keep right to it, but we'll come back and talk, listen to a little bit about. I want to talk about, look, one, two, three, these annual tree rings, okay? All right, y'all have a good one. We'll stop here. We'll try to pick up here. Uh, I'll, I'll pick up here in class tomorrow, okay? Y'all have a good day. Check those videos, guys. Take care.